Brazil's Amazon rainforest is being devastated by fires. Many of the farmers think the Amazon shouldn't exist. A battle between economic development and environmental concerns. It was planned, fostered, and executed by the Bolsonaro government. With thousands of miners invading the forests to hunt for gold. Nearly 10,000 square kilometers of the Amazon are destroyed in 2019. Através da proposta do próprio presidente Bolsonaro de utilizar essa questão mineral como uma grande alavanca de desenvolvimento econômico. Displacing hundreds of indigenous communities, pushing them to the edge. A violência tem, tem recrudescido no âmbito dos indígenas por conta da disputa por recursos naturais. Cadê outras pessoas que falam que está protegendo a Amazônia? Então, como a gente sempre diz, as árvores têm uma vida igual nós também. CNA investigates why the lungs of the world are being lost. Sao Paulo, Brazil. By 3 p.m., the city is smothered by black clouds of smoke. Scientists eventually discover the cause. Fires raging in the far north of the country, thousands of miles away in the Amazon rainforest. Official figures show more than 87,000 Amazonian fires are recorded in Brazil in the first eight months of 2019. An increase of 76% from 2018. These fires destroyed 10,000 square kilometers of the Amazon in 2019. While the Brazilian government fails to act, The world responds with outrage. With criticism focused on newly elected far-right president, Jair Bolsonaro. The hate we know today was not happened by chance. It was planned, fostered, and executed by the Bolsonaro government. This is the truth. After Bolsonaro's election, Brazil's environmental agencies had their budget slashed. His economic policies are focused on developing the economy inside the Amazon rainforest. A list of birds sell. But Aldam's investigation unearthed a bigger problem. Lack of implementation of Brazil's forest laws. What has happened? The company looks to the fine. Ah, find two or three million reais. If I use good lawyers, I can stay years and years and years without pay. Or it's more expensive to pay at the same time you receive the fine, then roll and roll and roll again the fines. It's happened every time. From 1980 to 2019, Penalties for cutting trees down in protected areas totaled 17 billion US dollars. Less than 4% of these fines were collected. Corruption and the inability to collect fines 
have encouraged more violators to set up shop inside the Amazon. With hundreds of thousands of dollars to be made. There's a lot of people working with it. There's the people from illegal logging. There's the people from ag business. There's the people linked to illegal gold mining, for example. There's the people practicing wildlife traffic. There's a lot of people working with this chain of crimes in the Amazon. The forestation is one of them. The cleared land is used to produce beef and agri products, a large portion of which is exported to parts of Asia. People need to understand that we are all responsible for this. So even people far away in Pakistan, in China, in Australia, are also help helping with environment problems in the Amazon because they are consumers. They're helping to consume products that are coming from this region. Worldwide, forests still cover about 30% of the planet, but they're disappearing at an alarming rate. Between 1990 and 2016, the world lost 1.3 million square kilometers of forest, according to the World Bank. That's an area larger than South Africa. A floresta, além de uma produção de água, é como se fosse um oceano verde. Ela é um grande ar condicionado do planeta. Ela retira CO2 da atmosfera, estoca nas, na, nas árvores e, com isso, mitiga a mudança do clima, resfria a região. Se nós quisermos deixar para as próximas gerações um planeta minimamente habitável, nós precisamos manter a maior cobertura florestal tropical possível. We arrive in the state of Para to investigate the effects of the fires in northern Brazil. Burnt down jungles now resemble a war zone. Erika Berenga is an environmental scientist who's lived in the Amazon for the last 10 years, studying the destructive force of the fires here. Then what we do, we have a sort of tube that we put on the ground, a mesh tube, which is 30 centimeters and on the ground. And the roots grow inside the tube. So every three months, we get the tube off the ground, put the soil in a sheet, and then we hand pick all the roots for one hour. And then we put the soil back in the tube, the mesh tube back in the soil, and then it's gonna stay for another three months. So we can see in those three months, how many roots are produced, how many roots grow in there. And then we can estimate how much of the carbon it's being allocated to the roots. Erica takes us for a walk inside a protected area to show us the impact of fires on the Amazon. So this is one of the main differences that you're gonna see between a burned forest and an unborn forest. You can see that we're not seeing many trees, many big, thick trees that we associate with the Amazon. Just all very thin, fast-growing species. The Amazon rainforest has 410 billion trees in this region alone, with a total of 76 billion tons of carbon stored in them. If we were to deforest the whole of the Amazon basin that comprises nine countries, all the emissions that would arise from deforestation would be equivalent of 100 years of the US fossil fuel emissions. That's how much carbon the Amazon stores. So it's a vital component to fight climate change. By keeping the forest standing, we are locking all this carbon in the forest and not putting back into the atmosphere. The study shows that take over 100 years to recover the carbon stocks that are present in this forest. And we still don't know how long it's gonna take for the biodiversity recovery. Animals are being affected too. It's believed that there are about 3 million different species of plant and animal life in the Amazon. In the Amazon, it's estimated that there is 16,000 species of tree. Just in the Brazilian part of the Amazon, which is 60% of the whole Amazon, we estimate to be 11,000 species. 
Unfortunately, I think that within my lifetime, if there's no political will, if we don't take strong positions, the Amazon is going to be gone. But President Bolsonaro wants to abolish protection for indigenous lands. His calls have been echoed by miners who've put self-preservation ahead of environmental conservation. After the break, we meet these miners who have invaded the Amazon in search of gold. Brazil is one of the biggest gold producers in the world. With output reported at 81 million kilograms in 2018. But there is a new gold rush in Brazil today. One fueled by soaring unemployment in regions inside the Amazon rainforest. They are invading public lands, log the trees, do some gold mining and, and damage in these areas, or do some fishing and hunting. As the planet loses the Amazon rainforest at a rapid pace, there are miners on the other end of the equation who are making increasing gains. Locally known as Garimperos, their rising incomes develop cities like Peixoto de Acevedo. Located in Metro Grosso State, they are gold-producing hubs for Brazil's lucrative gold industry. Today, miners have become more organized, creating cooperatives to hunt for gold collectively. One such cooperative is Copa Jive, that was founded in 2008 by former Sao Paulo banker Gilson Camboy. He takes us for a tour of the Copa Jive gold mines that are under his supervision. Hoje a gente tem um total de superamos 5500 cooperados ativos e estamos com aproximadamente assim umas 130 frentes de lavras em atividade. E aí tem as que estão em fase de finalização de atividade, quanto as que está iniciando atividade, mas Such gold mines are legal as part of the Brazilian government's strategy to monetize the Amazon. But drone images reveal the damage to the environment. This was once a lush green forest with flora and fauna spread all across the landscape. It's been replaced by energy guzzling machines. Copa Jive alone has deforested 3,000 square kilometers of Amazon rainforest since 2008. Gold mining in the Amazon rainforest is attractive for the high yield of gold. On average, the concentration of gold is 0.5 grams for every one ton of soil. Inside the Amazon, the yield is much higher. Gold is found underground after topsoil is removed. 
Once a 10 meter ditch is ready, the miners at Copajibe, villagers from rural Brazil, get to work. A hydraulic machine is parked near the edge of this vast mining pit that's been carved into the rainforest's reddish brown earth. Hundreds of gallons of mud sludge produced by the miners is passed over carpets with the hope that gold flakes stick to it. The carpet is then washed into drums and the mud is taken to the final process. After extensive panning, mercury is used to extract gold from the mud through a process called amalgamation. Assim, a gente já tirou aqui em torno de 90% do mercúrio, a gente tirou aqui. Vai ficar aqui uns 10%, esses 10% a gente vai tirar quando fazer a fundição dele. Aí ele vai ficar, ele vai ficar, ele tá dessa cor aqui. Ele tá prata, ele tá da cor do mercúrio. É. A gente vai Tirar aqui. Olha como que ele fica. The crew at Copajive work without protective equipment <coughs> or procedures to help them discard the mercury safely. The amalgam of mercury and gold goes through the final process. Essa é a finalidade. A gente está colocando esse papel aqui, que é a hora que a gente for queimar o, o, o azul, o ouro, ele não grudar no fundo da cuia, que ele praticamente ele vai meio que derreter. Então a gente vai pôr aqui, entendeu? Esse papel. Ah. The heat applied evaporates the mercury, and gold is left in the pan. Copa Jive mined 400 grams of gold today. This is distributed equally amongst everyone at the mine. It will sell for 500 US dollars. In the poor countryside, that's a fortune for a day's hard labor. Na par, é, na parte que que tange a questão de a questão social, a gente tem um auxílio aos cooperados em questão assim às vezes numa eventualidade cadeira de roda, muleta, cesta básica, medicamentos, né? Já no caso quando a gente vai para a questão financeira, aí a gente tem a questão dele ter essa oportunidade de estar tá trabalhando numa área legalizada, onde ele consegue vender a sua produção com a devida nota fiscal, requerer a devida nota fiscal nos, nos trâmites legais, o ter os seus impostos devidamente recolhidos, devidamente quitados e ele tendo ali no caso uma origem lista para a receita que ele vem obtendo e assim ele tem a justificativa dos seus seus bens. The raw gold is sold to shops in the city, who process it into gold bars. The final product is exported to countries across Asia, the Middle East and America, earning billions of dollars in revenue for the government. Mines like Copajive are legal and all part of President Bolsonaro's master plan to monetize the Amazon. Mineração legal, ela passa por todos os regulamentos e as legislações que envolvem as autorizações, inclusive ambientais, para que ela possa operar. Obviamente que tendo ela todas essas licenças, ela tem um mapa, ela tem uma bússola de como fazer isso de forma sustentável e de forma também que gere emprego e renda, riqueza para o país sem prejudicar a natureza ou o meio ambiente. But what about the Amazon? 
on the ground, the damage done by legal mines is irreversible. Os peixes ficam mais rareados, a floresta é, é, perde seus animais, os barulhos hein, afugentam as caças, né? Os, os, o, o, os peixes também somem porque é solo revirado. Então, o impacto faz com que é, 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 o modo de vida dessas populações precise também ser alterado. By law. Copa Jive is supposed to restore the forests once the mine is closed. So Gilson takes us to a restored part of the mine. He's turned one area into a fish farm, while planting trees in another. É, a diferença não é que a rapidez de restauração não é compatível com a rapidez da, da exploração. Acontece que a gente está mexendo com um ser vivo e ele tem a sua necessidade, a sua, sua carência natural, vamos dizer assim. Então você abre uma área, faz o nivelamento, recompõe o material orgânico e faz o plantio dela, ela vai levar um tempo para poder voltar ao que era, porque é o crescimento, a questão da, da, dela florir, dela gerar nova semente, dessas sementes cair no solo, voltar de novo as novas as, essas que, que nasceram posteriormente do, das que foram plantadas. Então assim, o prazo dela no caso, da, da natureza em si, porque daí no caso já é uma coisa que depende, de, demanda da natureza, é que é um pouco mais lento o processo. As greed takes over concern for the environment, Many miners are going for the big bucks by starting their own mines, deep inside protected territories, away from the authorities. After the break, we dig deep into illegal mining and meet the people whose lands have been invaded in the protected forests of Brazil. Brazil's Amazon rainforest is one of the planet's best defenses against climate change. It absorbs billions of tons of carbon dioxide. But deforestation for logging, mining, and for farming crops and livestock has devastated it. In the last 10 years, the rainforest has lost an area the size of 8.4 million soccer fields. But the mining companies want to use indigenous lands to expand operations and make more profits. They're pushing for a change in Brazilian law, allowing firms to mine inside protected lands and indigenous reserves across the nation. Sem dúvida nenhuma, o aumento de legalização do setor não só vai diminuir a atividade legal na minha análise, como também vai diminuir o prejuízo ao meio ambiente do que causa essa inércia, essa deficiência de se analisar os processos que envolvem esses pedidos de licença. Através da proposta do próprio presidente Bolsonaro de utilizar essa questão mineral como uma grande alavanca de desenvolvimento econômico, Despite having protected status, indigenous territories are already facing an invasion. In Pará state alone, Brazilian authorities estimate that 30 metric tons of illegal gold, worth about 1.1 billion US dollars, has been excavated. That's six times more than the legal amount of gold traded in Brazil. Expectativa grande é de mais desmatamento, infelizmente. A se enxerga a Amazônia muito como se enxergava 20 anos atrás, onde a floresta precisa ser removida para poder dar lugar a atividades produtivas. This mining boom could lead to the extinction of indigenous communities that have weathered centuries of calamities in Brazil's rainforest. Roughly 900,000 indigenous people live in Brazil, less than 0.5% of the population. Oh, 
They belong to 400 tribes and speak more than 270 languages. One such tribe facing illegal mining in their protected areas are the Munduruku. We travel 16 hours to the city of Bubure. So we're on the Tapajos River in Pará State and we're heading to the Munduruku land, indigenous protected lands by the Brazilian government that have been invaded by illegal gold miners. And we're going to meet the chief of the tribe to understand the extent of the problem. Juarez is the chief of the Munduruku tribe. He leads nearly 14,000 members who have splintered into dozens of small villages, scattered across a territory slightly larger than 3,360 soccer fields. They've lived here for thousands of years. A floresta ela ensina, ensina a gente usa a cultura. A floresta ela ensina nós segurar nossa língua, falar nossa língua. A floresta ensina a nós a usar o nosso costume, ensina a gente a conhecer o lugar sagrado. Né? Então, a floresta faz tudo para a gente. Né? A floresta ensina a gente a sonhar, sonhar bem, não que nem os governos sonham, com aquela riqueza. That's why Juarez has to create borders, or more commonly known as demarcations, to identify his tribe's indigenous lands. Motivated by the surging international price of gold, miners choose to prospect for gold in protected reserves to evade taxes. It's estimated that nearly 50,000 illegal miners are working inside Para State alone. Por aí na região você não vê um garapé mais um garapé nativo mais só destruído, só destruído. Já só com barranco de garimpo velho. O garimpo funciona assim. Ela não tem fim. Ela vai embora. E se tiver pintando ouro na, na região, ali eles vão explorando tudo. Os garapé que tiver eles vão explorando. E vão, o que tiver eles vão tirando. É aqui o limite do território, né? A gente colocou essas duas placas aqui, tanto essa placa aqui é igual do governo e essa nossa placa que é tradicional, né? É por isso que a gente faz o limite para poder a gente estar tá fiscalizando ela. Né? A gente sabe que tem muito madeireiro, tem muito palmiteiro que está invadindo a terra, né? Então é por isso que a gente tem que estar tá com o com, com limite também limpo. Permanently evicting indigenous people from their land is forbidden under Article 231 of Brazil's Constitution. But the Bolsonaro government is planning to build dams and infrastructure in the Tapajos River Basin to boost the economy. Armed with machetes, Juarez and his crew ensure the conservation of 178,000 hectares of Amazon rainforest. Hoje a gente está recebendo uma ameaça muito grande, né, do governo. Hoje, hoje, agora a gente está sabendo que tem muito os pessoal estão querendo legalizar o garimpo dentro da terra indígena. Né? A gente sabe que isso vai prejudicar a natureza, vai prejudicar nós, né? Porque ela traz traz um, um série de problemas. Né? Juarez takes us to one such illegal mining site, an hour's boat ride on the Tapajos River. As we arrive, we spot a mining transport truck. We tread carefully, as most miners are armed, 
and do not like visitors. Miners in protected areas such as this excavate land deep inside the forests, away from the authorities, keeping clear of any inspections. A gente tem que é, andar preparado, né? Para mostrar que a gente é uma liderança e está na frente de uma comunidade. E para isso a gente tem que estar tá andando prepara preparado para todas as pessoas conhecer a gente que nós somos uma liderança. As we reach an abandoned mining pit, the extent of the devastation can only be gauged from high above. Kilometers of protected Amazon rainforest are now mere ditches. A gente está no garimpo do diamante. É aqui que eles começam. Começa não, começaram. Só que eles começaram descendo, foram até na boca e eles voltaram de novo. A mineração é minerador e também a legalização de garimpo. E aí fica muito pior, mais do que isso aqui ainda. Né? Esse aqui é uma empresa pequena. Está fazendo isso, imagina entra uma empresa grande. Né? E aí é, é aí que a gente se pergunta. E o nosso futuro geração? Eles vão viver de quê daqui a um tempo? Eu, pelo menos, que eu sou uma pessoa que eu defendo muito a floresta. Porque eu, eu sei o que significa a floresta para nós, para todo mundo. Não é só para os indígenas. A gente sabe que. We don't venture too far. We've been warned that the illegal miners may open fire. Five tribal leaders have already lost their lives in this battle. But with little enforcement of the law, the destruction continues. Os mundurucus estão sendo constantemente afetados. Eles têm sido enxovalhados das regiões que eles ocupam. É um processo que vem do continente, que vai esmagando eles em direção ao curso do rio Tapajós, né? é uma terra indígena compreendida entre rios, então a mineração ilegal ela vem empurrando os indígenas e esgotando os recursos hídricos, os recursos é, naturais, né? contaminando águas e causando desordem. A map published by an NGO shows illegal mining sites in 37 indigenous territories. In total, nearly 2,300 illegal mining sites with sophisticated infrastructure have been found in protected areas. Juarez fears for his life and his community. Currently in Brazil, mining on indigenous territories is totally prohibited. The Amazon contains about 20% of the world's total volume of river water. More than 80% of the world's food has its origins in this rainforest. Apart from tearing down native forests, miners have also started digging for gold in the rivers, contaminating these waterways with mercury. We have reports on fish, dolphins and indigenous tribes hardly contaminated by mercury. The humidity launched by the forests runs in the atmosphere and drops like rain all over Brazil, Argentina, South America, always connected. Dredging for gold disrupts rivers. Toxic pollutants seep into plants, animals and people. Um ano passado morreu muito peixe por causa que o rio não encheu e aí o peixe ficaram sem alimentar. Eu acho que é, eles tinham tinha que olhar mais para a nossa sobrevivência também, né? Porque a gente não é que nem esse pessoal que está morando na cidade, 
e compra o que já está pronto. Né? Então nós pescamos para poder se alimentar. Né? E o, os pessoal da cidade não. Vai em supermercado, eles já vão comprando o que já está pronto. Né? E nós é mais difícil. O nosso mercado é o Tapajós, é o rio. Né? E a floresta, da onde a gente tira mais alimentação. Guarez and his community can no longer fish in the river. They have to hunt for food on land. Researchers found 92% of all hair and fish samples collected here had high levels of mercury, resulting in abnormalities in the central nervous system of infants. So Juarez has decided to take things into his own hands. After the break, we follow the Munduruku as they plan to invade Brazil's Congress to pressure politicians to take action. Elas invasão de, de exploração de madeira né, e garimpo também. E aí quem está sofrendo com isso somos nós. Então a gente quer que ele responda a nossa pergunta. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, plans to reduce indigenous territories in the Amazon rainforest. The tribes are being sacrificed to help boost the economy, to create jobs. The mining sector is encroaching into the rainforest and the hunt for gold has begun. In 2018, Brazil's gold exports increased 150% on an output of 95 tons. With demand rising, miners are pushing deeper inside protected forests, radically changing the landscape forever. This is why indigenous tribes have decided to invade the federal capital, Brasilia. Alessandra Korab, a Munduruku indigenous activist, is leading the charge. Alessandra has arrived in Brasilia, the country's capital, to meet her Munduruku clan. A local school has been turned into a makeshift camp. These 50 Munduruku tribals plan to visit Brazil's Congress to meet politicians and demand that their lands, protected under Brazil law, be left alone. Porque a gente vem da aldeia, a gente vem de Badeira, lá pro Porto da Estrada, a gente pega o carro para Taituba, para a cidade de Taituba, de lá a gente pega um ônibus para vir para cá. É por isso que a gente a gente vem aqui correndo o risco de, da nossa vida também. A gente está contando sentar com defen defensor público pelas invasão de, de exploração de madeira e né, garimpo também. E aí quem está sofrendo com isso somos nós. According to Brazil's National Institute for Space Research, in 2018 alone, five square kilometers of indigenous Munduruku land was deforested. In 2019, the tree massacre increased to 15 square kilometers. Alessandra believes illegal miners have the backing of politicians. Como a gente está em guerra, né? Não vou pintar aqui, né? E esse aqui é quando antigamente as mulheres, né? Se pintava, né? Quando tinha um ritual assim, quando os, os homens iam caçar, ou então ia para a guerra, né?
Next day, the tribe prepares for battle. They believe Bolsonaro's rhetoric has encouraged the advance of the miners deeper into indigenous territory. The Munduruku are on their way to Congress to block a bill that will allow mining companies to operate inside indigenous lands legally. It's a key campaign promise of President Bolsonaro. If approved, indigenous tribes and their way of life may be gone forever. An economic recession in Brazil has driven large numbers of unemployed villagers into the jungle to hunt for gold. And the price is being paid by indigenous people. The Munduruku arrive at Brazil's Congress, the main legislative body of the country. This movement is helped by the country's only indigenous congresswoman, Joinha Wapichana. She's only the second indigenous woman to have ever been elected to Congress. Em primeiro lugar, é o dever do Estado brasileiro fazer a proteção dos povos indígenas, dos seus direitos e das terras, principalmente. Então, nessa é uma obrigação constitucional. A terra indígena é um patrimônio, um bem comum e bem coletivo dos povos indígenas. Nesse sentido, então, não estou é, confiante, não confio nesse governo e porque ele é um governo que persegue, ele odeia os povos indígenas, pelo que eu estou vendo, e não tem feito nada para fazer a segurança dos povos indígenas. Of the more than 594 Congress representatives, only three show up. The others celebrate a football team's participation in a local league. In a separate chamber, Alessandra makes an impassioned plea for the rights of the Munduruku. A nossa luta é isso. A nossa luta, que vem de Santarém, do Xingu, do Alto Tapajós, do Mar de Tapajós, era para ver as pessoas estar aqui e dizer, ah, os índios estão ali, é, os índios estão lá. Eles sintam sentindo isso na pele. Eles sintam vendo a desgraça que está acontecendo. E dizer, não a mineração das terras indígenas, e sim demarcação das terras indígenas. Sem a demarcação, não existe o meio ambiente, não existe os animais, não existe o rio. Imagine nós, indígenas que estão tá ali, né? a ferrovia passando por cima, a hidrelétrica alagando as terras indígenas, secando. Mas quer acabar com os povos indígenas, quer acabar com o rio Tapajós. As Brazil is polarized on the issue of mining in the Amazon, other industries are coming up with solutions. Lorraine started Paxa, a cattle ranching firm, in June 2015. He helps Brazilian farmers with sustainable cattle farming. According to the Amazon Institute, some 12 million hectares of cattle field have been degraded in the Amazon region. To create new grazing land, vast expanses of the Amazon are cleared. To date, an estimated 70% of deforested Amazon has been converted into pasture land but Paxa offers a solution. So here we use rotated grazing. Rotated grazing means that we have a production module that has several divisions. And the cattle will stay in one division for just a few days and then goes to the other one and then to the other one. And while uh, the cattle does all this uh, cycle, then the first one is resting. This allows, first, uh, the fact that the cattle 
always has access to the best part of the plant, only the leaves. Doing uh, efficient production, we don't need uh, any more to clear any more land. Many big corporations uh, over the world have made commitments to remove deforestation from the supply chains. From 2010 to 2017, Brazil's beef exports climbed 25% to 1.5 million tons, with Hong Kong importing the most. To accommodate global beef demand, cattle ranchers are driving their herds deeper into the Amazon rainforest. But since operations began in Alta Floresta, Paxa has restored 10,000 hectares of pastureland. It now runs 20 farms that sustainably manage cattle, 34,000 head in 2017 alone. For Laurent, reinventing cattle feed was another necessity of the hour. Methane emitted by livestock accounts for about 5.5% of worldwide greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases that increase global temperatures. And when they have this poor diet, only based on pasture and a low quality pasture, then they have a lot of production of methane. When we do the reform of the pastures, and then we enter with this supplement, uh, we change the diet of the, the animals. So we have two benefits. One is to reduce by more or less 40% the amount of methane that is emitted by the animals. So when you consider the methane of the animals and also the carbon from the soil, all together we reduce the emissions by 90%. Today, the deforestation in the Amazon claims an area the size of two football fields a minute. If consumption patterns don't change, 50% of the Amazon may vanish by 2030 destroying one of the world's largest carbon sinks. Protecting existing rainforests and aggressively planting new ones may be the only way forward, and perhaps one of the last few ways to help save this planet and all who call it home. Thank you.